Okay, this is part two, solving polynomial equations. Uh, the point I was trying to make at the end of part one is summarized up here, that the x-intercepts of a graph of a polynomial function correspond only to the real roots of a polynomial equation. They don't correspond to the complex roots or the non-real roots. And the example we just did solve for two, and we saw when we generated the graph that they didn't represent themselves as x-intercepts, only real roots. So another example where we have real roots that do lend themselves to being x-intercepts as well is when we end up with a quadratic equation as part of our factored form that isn't factorable, but we can use a quadratic formula. And if we end up with real roots from a quadratic formula, we'll have x-intercepts. If we end up with non-real roots, then we won't have x-intercepts. So let's explore this example further. Again, I've done a little bit of the work for you already. We're starting with a partially factored um, polynomial. Uh, we factored out one term, x plus 3, and now we need to look to see if this polynomial is fact or if this quadratic term is factorable. And we'd be looking for numbers that multiply to 8 and add to negative 2. And unfortunately, because 8 is positive, there are no pair of numbers that multiply to 8 and add to negative 2. If it was negative 8, then we would have values, but it's not so we don't. So what do we have to do? Well, we would have to use the quadratic formula. So we know one of our roots is going to be negative 3, and that comes from our first term. But what roots come from this? Well, we can't factor So we need to use the quadratic formula. And if you remember, the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And in this case, a is 1, b is negative 2, c is 8. So we've got 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 8 all over 2 times 1. And if we simplify this a little bit, we get 2 plus or minus negative 2 squared is 4, subtract negative 32 is negative 28. we can simplify the square root of negative 28 a little bit by splitting up negative 28 into factors, one of which we can take the square root of. Negative 28 is the same as negative 7 times 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. The reason we factored out the 4 is because we can square root 4 and get 2. And then look, we have two terms, 2 plus or minus 2 times root 7 divided by 2. 2 is common to both of these terms. So we can divide and end up with 1. So we have 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 7. Now we already defined the square root of negative 1 as i because this is the key for your complex roots. Therefore the square root of negative 7 would just be 1 plus or minus i times the square root of 7. And then this should show you your two roots. One is 1 plus i root 7, and the other one is 1 minus i root 7. As soon as you get a complex root with i, what we have here is a non-real root that won't be an x-intercept. We will not have x-intercepts represented by either of these. So how do these help you graph? 
they don't necessarily help you find x-intercepts, but they do tell you that we don't cross the x-axis anywhere other than the real root of negative 3. So if we wanted to graph this, we would need to use Desmos. We can do a little bit of the sketching before Desmos. We're at degree 3. And we have a positive leading coefficient, so that means we'll start low and high. We know that the one of the x-intercepts is negative 3. And the y-intercept can be found by multiplying 3 and 8, which is 24. Because if we were to expand this out, the last term would be made by 3 times 8. The, these are the pieces we know. We know it's going to cross once, and then we know it's going to do something going through 24, but it's never going to cross again. And if you look at Desmos, the graph Desmos generates, it goes up, then comes back down, and then finishes high. Something like this. And that's as accurate as I would need you to sketch it. Knowing where it turns, you wouldn't, unless it's Desmos. So the only parts you could tell me about the graph are this point, this point, these two end behaviors. You would need to complete the rest using Desmos. If I asked you to find the roots, though, algebraically, you could find the roots of negative 3 and these two complex roots. Okay, So three roots, one real, which gives you an x-intercept, two complex, which don't give you x-intercepts. Complex roots always come in pairs. So if you have one, because of the plus or minus, you'll have another, which will look very similar. The only difference is that one will be positive, one will be negative. Last example, what if you're asked to find the roots and you can't factor? So what do I mean by that? Well, I mean x cubed minus 3x, and if we bring the 1 over, we'd have plus 1 equals 0. If I'm asked to solve this equation, I would try the factor theorem. Of 1 which would be plus or minus 1. And if you try 1, you don't get a remainder of 0. If you try negative 1, you don't get a remainder of 0. Therefore, it's not factorable. So what do you do? Well, if the function at 1 does not equal 0, and the function at negative 1 does not equal 0, you can't factor. Your only choice is to use Desmos. How do you use technology? Well, in Desmos, you would graph x cubed minus 3x plus 1, and you look for the roots or the x-intercepts. If we get the x-intercepts, we end up with x equals negative 1.9, x equals 0 0.3 and x equals 1.5. And on the graph that we would generate on Desmos, we would get something that looks like this. We also know the line intercept. So 1, negative 1 1.9, 0 0.3, and 1.5. And this is as much as we could do with this question. If you were given this in your homework, you would be expected to use technology to come up with the roots. Um, if you were given this on a test, there's not much you could do. Because I'm not going to give you the option to graph on Desmos. All you need to conclude is that you can't factor, therefore I need to use technology to finish the question, and the likelihood of me putting a question like that on a test is very, very small. So what's the point of this question? Well, the point of the question is to realize that not all polynomials are factorable, and when they're not, you do have to use technology to get the roots. When you have a degree 3 polynomial, you're going to get three roots, and since the complex roots have to come in pairs, your only options are to get three real roots, or one real root, with two complex roots. When you graph it in Desmos, you see that you get three real roots. Um, so we don't have any complex roots. 
And the reason we don't have any complex roots is because we couldn't factor out anything. There was nothing factorable to take out to leave us with that quadratic that would give us the complex roots. So in this case, we have three real roots that gave us three x-intercepts. Even though we couldn't get to those roots by factoring, we still have real roots. The word real just corresponds to whether or not they give you x-intercepts. And the fact that we have three x-intercepts means that we had three real roots. All right, that's it for part two. Thanks for watching.